<clears throat> now we're going to talk about something called the common logarithm. If you have a logarithmic function with the base of 10, it's called a common logarithmic function. So if you have f of x equals log base 10x, that's the same thing as f of x equals log x. If you don't have a base written here, it's assumed to be base 10. So if you see um, a log function or a log expression and there's no base there, you have to assume the base is 10. So on your calculator, there's a log button. If you have the TI30X2S, it looks like this. It's on the first column, second button. If you type in log, the calculator you can assume it's base 10. So if I have log um, 100, Again, we know it's base 10, so 10 is the base. 10 to what exponent gives me 100 back? We know it's going to equal 2. Okay. Again, we use your calculator and type in log 100. The calculator will then with base 10, and it'll give you the answer 2. Um, if I have log of 2 thirds, again, there's no base written here. There's no base, so it's assumed to be base 10. So if I type in the calculator log and do 2 divided by 3, it'll give me approximately negative 0.176. Okay. Um, so again, if you use the log button in your calculator, it's assumed base 10. And not all logarithms have base 10. Yep, some do. So let's look at example. Example 8, we're modeling the height of children. The percentage of adult height obtained by a boy who is x years old can be modeled by this function here. Where x represents the boy's age from 5 to 10, and f of x represents the percentage of his adult height. Approximately what percentage of the adult height has the boy obtained at age 8? So if a boy is age 8, what percentage has he reached of his adult height? Again, um, think about this clearly, we know that someone who is 8, a boy who is 8, will not have grown fully to the adult height, but he will have a percentage of that um, that height. Okay, so f of 8, I'm going to 8, x represents the boy's age, as long as it's between 5 and 15, equals 29 plus 48.8 times the log of 8 plus 1. So I get 29 plus 48.8 times the log of 9. You type in your calculator, we get approximately 75.6. And again, that represents percentage. So by the time a boy reaches age 8, um, he will have obtained approximately. 76% of his adult height. Okay, as I'm recording this video, my son will be 8 in July. So um, he will have 76% of his adult height. So he has a little bit more growing to do, but he's almost there at his adult height. Okay. So uh, on your own, I want you to go ahead and tell me what percentage of uh, his adult height will a boy have attained at age 14. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, figure that out for me. Okay, for the on-your-own problem, by the time the boy is 14, he will have attained approximately 86.4% of his adult height. Okay, so I hope that you used your calculator to um, to evaluate these because when you take your exam, a lot of times students will bring the calculator to me and say, how do I use my calculator? You want to know how to use a calculator now when you do your, uh, when you watch your videos, when you do your assignment or homework, you want to be able to use a calculator. I can't help you on the exam. I can only help you before you take your exam. Okay, some properties of common logarithms. Okay, so let's look at general properties. If I have a log base b and I have 1 here, the exponent I need here is going to be 0. If I have log base b and I'm trying to get b back, I need the exponent of 1. If I have log base b and I'm trying to get b the x back, I need the exponent of x. And then if I have b log base b x, then that's going to be just x. And again, these are the inverses of so base b, base b, base b, base b. They actually negate each other out. Now, if I'm common logarithm, the only difference between what I did there and here is I don't have a base written. If I don't have a base written, it's assumed to be 10. 
So here again, log one, well it's gonna be base ten. Ten to what exponent will give me one back and be zero. Ten to what exponent will give me ten back? I need a one. Ten to what exponent will give me ten the x back? I need x. And ten uh, raised to the log base ten x. The base are the same here, so I just get x. Okay, let's talk about something called the natural logarithm. A logarithmic function with base e is called the natural logarithmic function. So if I have f of x equals log base e of x, the same thing as f of x equals the natural log, and we call it ln x. And I'm using cursive there because I like to use that as my ln. Some people write f of x equals ln x. Just remember that that's a l, not a 1. So I just I make cursive for that reason. If you see this from now on, you will never write out like this anymore, but if you see it like this, you just think of log and then you think of a base e here. That's all you're going to think about, base e. You have a natural log button in your calculator. Um, it looks like this. And if you have the TI30X2S, it will be the third button down in the first column. And if you type that in your calculator, it'll, t it'll assume the base is e. So if I want to do the natural log of 2, I type in my calculator. I get approximately 0.69315. I'm rounding it off. Now what that means, this means that e to the 0.69315 is approximately 2. And it's approximately 2 because I rounded this, so I, don't, I have the approximate 2. So if you type in your calculator, um, you'll get almost um, 2. I get 2.0 and a bunch of decimals after that. The natural log of e to the let me write that. The natural log of e to the second power. I don't need to calculate for that because here it's natural log of e to the second power. The base here is e, so this is assumed to be an e here, right here, is e. So it's going to equal two. There's a little invisible E here that we don't see. Okay? So let's go ahead and um, oops, look at the natural logarithms. The natural log of 1, remember it's the base E. E to what exponent will give me 1? Well, E to the 0 power will give me 1. Natural log of E, well, the base is E. E to what power gives me E back will give me 1. Natural log base e to give me e to the x is just an x. And e to the natural log of e to the x, there's an e right here, those negate each other out, and I just get x. Okay. Example of this is actually a really good example, um, especially when we get to summertime. When the outside air temperature is anywhere from 72 to 96 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature inside an enclosed vehicle climbs by 43 degrees in the first hour. Especially Kentucky, um, you, you have a hot day and um, and not, not even a hot day, a 72 degree day, and you close that vehicle up, that temperature in that car is going to rise 43 degrees in the first hour. The bar graph below shows the temperature increase for the first hour, or through the hour, throughout the hour. Um, the function model temperature increase in degrees Fahrenheit after X minutes. Use the function to define the temperature increase to the nearest degree after 50 minutes. How well does the function model the actual um, increase shown? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at f of x equals 13.4 natural log of x minus 11.6. x represents um, minutes, um, after x minutes. So if after 50 minutes, we're going to go ahead and put f of 50 equals 13.4 natural log of 50 minus 11.6. When you type in your calculator, just make sure that when you type in your calculator that you actually have parentheses around this part because you're only doing the natural log of 50. You're not doing the natural log of 50 minus 11 points. Like that, that together you won't do. When you type in your calculator. Go ahead and type in the calculator with me. And again, know your calculator. If you have a different calculator, you might have to type it in separately. And I get um, approximately 40.8. So after 50 minutes, 
the temperature in the car rises approximately 41 degrees. And so like a 50 minute, um, it looks like that pretty well, um, the function, the model actually modeled it pretty well. So this is pretty well. So think about this carefully. So after 15 minutes, that temperature had risen 41 degrees. So let's say it was a 72 degree day, it's already 100 and something degrees inside that car. Now let's see, um, on your own, I don't have a space yet, so go ahead and do it on your own. I'm going to pause the video. And you hear this, these stories about maybe being left in the car in the summertime and um, it, it's a tragic, very tragic how that happened. And, how the temperature increases so rapidly. If if that car, um, if after how many minutes, let's go ahead and make up a minute, say two hours, let's say after 120 minutes, tell me how, how hot that car is inside. Um, and again, you can you imagine those stories that you read about um, how hot it is inside a car. I mean, you, you hear about 200 degrees, you know, etc. 150 degrees, it's just, it's just heartbreaking. So I want you to go ahead and figure out after 120 minutes what would it be inside that car. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and then we'll check around. Okay, so on your own I did 120 minutes and I got um, approximately 52.6 um, degrees. So um, it rises 50, 50, about 53 degrees. Um, and actually this is uh, throughout the hour. So it looks like this is throughout the hour. This model might not be the best thing to do for because 120 minutes is past the um, past the hour. But I wanted to go ahead and make sure you could use a calculator to um, to input that in there. Now um, this is the end of section 4.2 and if you have any questions make sure you let me know. It's really important um, especially an example let's look here. Beginning of the section we talked about Example one, example two, and example three. Those are the examples where, um, if I were, if you were in class, I would give you a quiz over these. You, you need to know how to do these instantly. You don't need to look them up. You should be able to go back from logarithmic form to um, exponential form and vice versa really quickly. So if you're in my in-person class, I might just do a little pop quiz over this. So examples one, two, or examples um, one, two, and three, I would be ready for a pop quiz um, when you come to class. Over uh, these problems, it'd be like ten problems, and you can quickly give me the answers to those. Okay. If you have any questions, just let me know. If you're in my online class, you won't get that pop quiz, but you will be um, expected to know how to do those instantly, especially when you take your exam. You're spending time looking at your notes, trying to figure out how to do these. Uh, the next section, the next few sections are going to be really difficult. Um, I kind of I kind of compare it to, um, you have to know that 5 times 5 is 25. If you spend your time just typing in the calculator or looking up what 5 times 5 is, you're spending your time doing something that you don't need to spend your time on. Okay? If you have any questions, make sure you email me. This is the end of section 4.2.